Let's consider the sequence of numbers 4, 7, 1, 8, 9, 7, 6. And we know for n greater than 2, the nth term of the sequence is the unit digit of the sum of two previous terms. So to find this term, we did 4 plus 7, which is 11. And we're looking at the unit digit, which is of course 1. And to find the next term, we did 7 plus 1 to get 8. 1 plus 8 to get 9, 8 plus 9 to get 17, but we only care about the unit digit, so we care about 7. 9 plus 7 is 16, to get 6, and so on. So the next term is going to be 7 plus 6, 13, and we're going to write down 3. So we know how the sequence is constructed, so let's read on. Let S sub n denote the sum of the first n terms of the sequence. Okay, so we know, for example, s sub 3 is 4 plus 7 plus 1, or 12. So we're looking at the first three terms. And we want to find the smallest value of n for which s sub n is greater than 10,000. So we want the sum of the first n terms of the sequence to be greater than 10,000 and we want to find the smallest value of n for which s sub n jumps over 10,000. Okay, so how do we start? The first thing I realize is that, who knows, there may be a really creative way of approaching this, but I see there are only so many, so many sequences that we can have. What do I mean by that? Well. We, are, we have sequence of one digit numbers, so each number is from 0 to 9, and realize that once we have 4, 7 again, so if the sequence goes on and we hit 4, 7 again, then we are going to repeat because after 4, 7, we know we're going to have 1, 8, 9, 7, 6, and so on. So we know this sequence eventually may repeat with 4, 7. Wait a bit, but it has to repeat. Why does it have to repeat? Because if it does not repeat, that would mean every single pair after 4-7 is different from 4-7. Every single thing after 4-7 is never going to be 4-7. If we assume that, that, that's going to mean there are infinitely many possible ways of picking two numbers composed of 0 and 9 each, but there's only 100 ways of picking the numbers. There's only 100 ways of picking a pair of numbers that's going to come after 4-7. So eventually, it has to repeat. Okay, so we have established that sequence is going to repeat. But you may say, does it really have to be 4-7 again? Maybe, who knows, maybe 4-7, 1-8, you don't really have to know this, but I'm touching on this because this thing is very interesting. So you may say, instead of 4-7, what if 1-8 repeats? What if we have a bunch of 1-8, 1 8, 1 8 9, 7 part is repeating afterwards? What if 4-7 never appears again? Well, that's impossible. Why? Because if you have 1-8, you know this term before 1 has to have been 7. 7 is the only one that when added to 1 gets you 8 in the unit digit. And you see that applies for every single case. For example, if you knew 9 and 7, you know the number before has to be 8. Obviously, 9 plus a 1-digit number can't be 7. But to get 17, we can, we can use 8. So there is a unique number that has to precede each one. Aha! Wait a bit. I think that means 47 has to, has to appear. Because, because if we, if we go on with this sequence, and let's say some, some sequence, let's say A, B, C, A, B, C, starts repeating. Starts repeating, and let's say this thing does not contain 4 and 7. Is this possible? Well, no, because we know C has to come before A and B, and we know there's only one number, one number, namely C, that comes before A and B, so that would mean you're going to have C before AB, and using the same reasoning, B before C, A before B, and so on. And that's going to mean that 4, 7 was never, never in the sequence to begin with, and that's a contradiction. So we know we know, this is very interesting. We know, we know there has to be a repeat because there's only a finitely many values. And we know when they repeat, 4, 7 has to be included because if we assume that 4, 7 is not in the repeating portion, we have a contradiction that 4, 7 was never there to begin with. So that's very interesting to think about. But I digressed a lot. The main point I want to make is that 
is that we may be able to use this repeating characteristic of the sequence to our advantage. So let's see how they repeat. Let's see if we can find where they repeat quickly. So we have 4718976363. And let's see how this goes on. After 6 and 3, we should get 9. 3 plus 9 is 12. So we put down 2. And going on, 1, 3, 4, 7. Here it is. We have another 4, 7. And we know this part, the same thing, is going to repeat once again. So we know this part is going to repeat. Okay, I think that's going to help us. So what do we want to find? We want to find when the sum of first n terms becomes greater than 10,000. Well, what's the sum of this repeating portion? Well, 4 plus 7 is 11, plus 1 is 12, plus 8 is 20, 29, 36, 42, 45, 54, 56, 57, 60. So we know the sum of the repeating portion is 60. So if we know there are two repeating portions, if we know there are two repeating portions, we know the sum is 120. If we have three of them, we know the sum is 180, and so on. So let's think about how many repeating portions are there before 10,000. How many repeating portions do we have before 10,000? Well, we can simply find that by dividing 10,000 by 60. And this is not too hard. So 6, 360, 400, 6, 360, 40. So we know, we know this part is going to repeat 166 times. 166 times, but that's not enough. Because we want to go more than 10,000. If we do 166 times, we still have 40 left. We have 40 left over. We have to... We have to continue this repeating part to get extra 40 into our sum. And that's not hard to do. 4 plus 7 is 11, 12, 20, 29, 36, 42. So here it is. So we are going to stop at 6 to get another 42 into our sum. So we know we are going to repeat this 166 times. And we are going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 more. And we are going to go 7 more terms. So how many terms do we have? We want to find how many terms we're talking about. Well, when we're repeating this 166 times, how many terms are we counting? Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 terms. So we have 12 terms that's repeating 166 times. 166 times 12 quickly gets us 1992. So we have 1992 terms from this repeating part. So we have 1992 terms from the repeating part. And then we're adding seven more terms to make sure our summation is actually going to go more than 10,000. So in the end, we have 1992 plus seven or 1999 terms. So the answer to this question, answer to this question is 1999. Notice that it's not 2002. So D is wrong. So I guess, that's funny in a way, but the answer to this question is B.